block outside, but the old downtown Kip City, or Tippecanoe. Uh, so if these programs, which will appear here weekly, if they generate a profit, that profit will go toward that restoration. Uh, we uh, have some good programs coming in for you, and uh, we hope that we will see all of you often. Hope you'll bring some friends back. It was back when the settlers first began coming into this area that there was a very immediate need for industry and for transportation. Well, in 1837, they pushed the Miami Erie Canal through here, which took care of part of the transportation. And in 1838, two brothers, Uriah and James John, uh, they helped with the uh, industry part when they began building this mill. It was finished in 1839 and began operation. Now, in 1840, one of your early developers came along and laid out a town to the west of the mill. That was John Clark. Now, at that time, William Henry Harrison was conducting his campaign for president. And because of uh, his uh, fame in the uh, Indian battle at Tippecanoe, he was, became known as Old Tip. And the uh, slogan, Tippecanoe and Tyler II, was created. Well, John Clark was a staunch supporter of William Henry Harrison. And so he named the town Tippecanoe. And so began Tippecanoe, which later, very much later, became Tip City. And so we are trying to bring back some of the history, some of the early happenings here, acquaint people with it, and keep the history that still remains, the historic buildings and so forth, uh, put them back in as nearly as original shape as can be done. One of the projects is the old mill, the old uh, lock out here, and of course the mill, and the old downtown section of Tip. These are the objects that we're working for. Uh, our entertainment tonight, we have a group that has come to us from Pickaway County, uh, that's Circleville, or Circleville is in Pickaway County. We have the Pickaway Graphics, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy the program that they bring you tonight. Uh, I will introduce Cliff Kearns, who is the director of the band, and he will introduce the band to you. Enjoy yourselves.
Jeff Matthew, Laura Bethel, Chris Horn, Carol Garrett, Chabone, Jerry Voss, and I'm Cliff Current. I play Euphonium. Our first number was The Entertainer by Scott Joplin, who composed over 50 ragtime tunes. William Kuyper, who is a March composer, as well as a number called Raggy Trombone, he was born in Washington, Indiana, and at an early age he developed an interest in music, and by the age of 15, was writing his own compositions. An accomplished performer on both the violin and cornet, Kuyper composed numerous marches, gallops, waltzes, intermezzos, and overtures. Ironically, his best-known number, a brilliant march entitled Kuyper's Spatial, was not published until after his death, as well as this number we're going to play now, Raggy Trombo.
like to play the gay 90s medley, which includes In My Merry Old Mobile, Van Played On, Sweet Adeline, While Strolling Through the Park One Day, A Hot Time in the Old Town Tonight, Wait Till the Sun Shines Now.
were primarily known as a brass ensemble. We do have some other quirks in our assembly, so we now are going to entertain you with a dialogue with Bill Bailey.
give you a long hair number for the night. Edward Grieg wrote incidental music to Ibsen's Hair Hint in 1876. In the Hall of the Mountain King is from the Peregrine Suite. In the Hall of the Mountain King. <laughs> Thank you. 
Duke Ellington was born in Washington in 1899. In 1932, he wrote a song called, It Don't Mean a Thing If It Ain't Got That Swing. The style, swing, is not new. It was a variation of New Orleans improvisation with this difference, group notated improvisation. That is, the parts were written out for the groups to, to play. This was occupied in solo improvisation as well as ensemble. This is our version of It Don't Mean a Thing If It Ain't Got That Spring. numbers of March, called the Carrollton March, written by Carl King, who was born in Painersville, Ohio. His family moved to Canton, Ohio in 1902, and it was there that he bought a cornet, exchanged it later for a euphonium, which he played in the local Thayer Band. In 1910, King began performing with circus bands and in 1913 landed a job with the Barman Bailey's Circus Band, The Carrollton March by Carl King.
Broadway musical in 1948. Our next number, Once in Love with Amy, is from Where's Charlie?
like to stretch your legs uh, a few steps there, you'll find a lot of goodies. Uh Just a closer walk is a traditional New Orleans street band piece. It most characterized, characteristically would have been played in a solemn funeral procession from the church to the cemetery. <coughs> Followed the slow, dirge-like beginning, an up-tempo rendition represents the happy send-off to a better life. The original melody has been found in hymnals as early as 1860. Just a closer walk to be. <laughs>
Fillmore, as we mentioned before, was a very prolific composer. He composed over 250 compositions and 750 arrangements during his lifetime. Many of these pieces were written under seven pseudonyms, including Harold Bennett, Will Huff, Al Hayes. Fillmore is also known as the father of the trombone smear, as he composed 15 novelty numbers featuring trombone glissandos or smears. These novelties became very popular and continue to be performed to this day. We include in our program probably his most famous slide trombone number, Lasses Trombone. 